the Simply Novel team, and I am here today to read to you the first chapter of Among the Hidden. This is one of our all-time favorite books. Let's start with reading the back. Luke has never been to school. He's never had a birthday party or gone to a friend's house for an overnight. In fact, Luke has never had a friend. Luke is one of the shadow children, a third child forbidden by the population police. He's lived his entire life in hiding, and now, with a new housing development replacing the woods next to his family's farm, he is no longer even allowed to go outside. Then, one day, Luke sees a girl's face in the window of a house where he knows two other children already live. Finally, he meets a shadow child like himself. Jen is willing to risk everything to come out of the shadows. Does Luke dare to become involved in this dangerous plan? Can he afford not to? All right, here we go. Among the Hidden, Chapter 1. He saw the first tree shudder and fall far off in the distance. Then he heard his mother call out to the kitchen window, Luke, inside, now. He never disobeyed the order to hide. Even as a toddler, being barely able to walk in the backyard's tall grass, he had somehow understood the fear in his mother's voice. But on this day... The day they began to take the woods away, he hesitated. He took one extra breath of fresh air, scented with clover and honeysuckle, and from coming from far away, pine smoke. He laid his hoe down gently and savored one last moment of feeling warm soil beneath his bare feet. He reminded himself, I will never be allowed outside again. Maybe never again, as long as I live. He turned and walked into the house as silently as a shadow. Why? he asked at the supper table that night. It wasn't a common question in the Garner house. There was plenty of hows. How much rain did the back field get? How's the planting going? Even what's? What'd Matthew do with the 516th wrench? What's Dad going to do about that busted tire? But why? Wasn't considered much worth asking. Luke asked again. Why'd you have to sell the woods? Luke's dad harumped and paused in the midst of shoveling forkfuls of boiled potatoes into his mouth. Told you before, we didn't have a choice. Government wanted it. You can't say no to the government. Mother came over and gave Luke's shoulder a reassuring squeeze before turning back to the stove. They had defied the government once with Luke. That had taken all the defiance they had in them. Maybe more. We wouldn't have sold the woods if we hadn't had to. She said, ladling out thick tomatoey soup. The government didn't ask us if we wanted houses there. She pursed her lips as she slid the bowls of soup onto the table. But the government's not going to live in the houses, Luke protested. At 12, he knew better, but sometimes he still pictured the government as a very big, mean, a very big, mean fat person, two or three times as tall as an ordinary man who just went around yelling at people, not allowed and stop that. It was because of all, because of the way his parents and older brothers talked. Government won't let us plant corn there again. Government's keeping the prices down. Government's not going to like this crop. Probably some of the houses who live in, probably some of the people who live in the houses will be government workers. Mother said, "It'll all be city people." If he'd been allowed. Luke would have gone over to the kitchen window and peered out at the woods, trying for the umpteenth time to picture rows and rows of houses where the firs and maples and oaks now stood, or had stood. Luke knew from a sneak peek right before supper that half the trees were now toppled. Some already lay on the ground, some hung at weird angles from their former lofty positions in the sky. Their absence made everything look different like a fresh haircut exposing a band of untanned skin on the forehead. Even from deep inside the kitchen, Luke could tell the trees were missing because everything was brighter, more open, scarier. And then, when those people move in, I have to stay away from the windows? Luke asked, though he already knew the answer. The question made Dad explode. He slammed his hand down on the table then you gotta stay away now. Everybody and his brother is going to be tramping around back there to see what's going on. They see you, 
He waved his fork violently. Luke wasn't sure what the gesture meant, but he knew it wasn't good. No one had ever told him exactly what would happen if anyone saw him. Death? Death was what happened to the runt pigs who get stepped on by their stronger brothers and sisters. Death was a fly that stopped buzzing when the swatter hit it. He had a hard time thinking about himself in connection with a smashed fly or the dead pig gone stiff in the sun. It made his stomach feel funny even trying. I don't think it's fair we got to do Luke's chores now, Luke's older brother Mark grumbled. Can't he go outside some, maybe even at night? Luke waited hopefully for the answer, but Dad just said, no, without looking up. It's not fair, Mark said again. Mark was the second son, the lucky second. Luke thought when he was feeling sorry for himself. Mark was two years older than Luke and barely a year younger than Matthew, the oldest. Matthew and Mark were easily recognizable as brothers with their dark hair and chiseled faces. Luke was fairer, smaller boned, softer looking. He often wondered if he'd ever look tougher like them. Somehow, he just didn't think so. Luke don't do nothing no how, Matthew jeered. We won't miss his work at all. It's not my fault, Luke protested. I'd help more if... Mother laid her hands on his shoulders again. Hush, all of you, she said. Luke will do what he can. He always has. The sound of the tires on the gravel driveway driveway came through the open window. Now who? Dad started. Luke knew the rest of the sentence. Who could that be? Why were they bothering him now? His first chance all day to sit down? It was a question Luke always heard the end of, end of from the other side of the door. Today skittish because of the woods coming down he scrambled up faster than usual dashing for the door to the back stairs he knew without watching that mother would take his plate from the table and hide it in a cupboard would slide his chair back into the corner so it looked like an unneeded spare in three seconds she would hide all the evidence that luke even existed just in time to step to the door and offer a weary smile to the fertilizer man or the government inspector or whomever else had come to interrupt their supper. All right, Among the Hidden. This is the first in a beautifully written series. So be sure to check this book out. Teachers, be sure to check the link down below. See you later. Bye.